Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jody, and um, I have basically I've spent my career about 40 years helping people to get jobs and to move up in those jobs. And I've worked with people all the way from um, uh, individuals who are looking to get their very first job to higher level professionals who are looking to move up in their careers. It's it's really it's just been my life work. It's my passion. Um, so a major part of getting a job, um, a make it or break it moment is succeeding at the job interview. So today we're gonna have a fairly fast moving session, I think that's gonna cover um, various aspects of, of uh, being successful at a job interview. So that's gonna include, we're gonna take a very quick look at dressing for the interview. Um, and then we are going to actually view some videos of a job seeker um, answering very common interviewing questions. And so we're gonna have an opportunity to play like we're the employer to figure out whether or not we think that that would be a uh, uh, good interview that would help them or would help move them along or whether or not the interviewee has some things that they want to improve. And then um, what I wanna do is I want to uh, show you a little uh, strategy, um, show you a way that, um, that I, I think will help you to prepare interview answers, um, the, the, the things that you want to bring out at an interview. Um, so that I, I think anybody who goes on an interview has a little bit of nervousness and what I want to do is be able to help you just calm the nerves because you'll feel more prepared. So the first thing I want us to look at is um, dressing for success. Um, and so, um, and I've already gone over the things that we're going to cover. So um, just give me a second because we're going to play this as a game. And so I'm going to share a different video. Okay, am I slideshow from current? <laughs> would this be inappropriate for? And um, Kirsten and Brittany, I need to let you know that I cannot see chat, I think because of the game. So if anything comes through chat, you would need to uh, read those. One of you needs to unmute and read the answer. Yeah, of course. It looks like we're getting um, a lot of A's. So the attorney's office. Okay. So um, this is inappropriate for the attorney's office. And my guess is, and, and we'll see in a second whether or not that is correct, but um, because in an attorney's office, you'd be more likely to want to wear a suit or a sports coat and, and slacks, or if it's a woman, you know, some uh, more business looking attire. Um, and I think that, this gentleman might be able to get away with it if he actually tucked in the under the the red shirt. Um, but anyway, so let's see, attorney's office, how did you do? Is that your final answer? And I'm gonna go, yeah, that's what you think. So um, you got a hundred, if you said A, you got a hundred points. So let's continue. Next. Oh, now I can see. 
Okay, what job would this outfit be the least likely to cost the applicant the job? So another way of saying like, uh, which, like there's only one of these jobs that I've listed that this would, and I'm not even saying that the outfit is ever appropriate, but is probably far less likely to have a negative impact um, than at some of the other jobs. So is it at a, a clerk at a high-end retail store like uh, Ford Taylor's, like Nordstrom's, like Macy's, um, B, SPCA, working with the animals, um, C, a waitress at Applebee's, or D, an administrative assistant at a doctor's office. Where, where uh, which job would this outfit be the least likely to cost the applicant the job? And Brittany, are you seeing any answers in chat? Yep. So I'm seeing mixed. I'm seeing some D's. I'm seeing some C's. Okay. So you're seeing C's, you're seeing D's. Hmm because I want us to move forward. Um, otherwise we have to start the game over. Well, I, there is a, a way to do it. Um, I think that at a high, I think everybody agrees. You would not wear this at a high-end retail store. Um, the SPCA working with animals, if you think about what do they do at the Society for Protection Against Cruelty to, to uh, Animals, is they're cleaning cat cages, they're cleaning dog cages, they're feeding, they're grooming them, they're taking them for walks. Um, this would actually be the type of outfit that you very well, because oftentimes those places are also not air conditioned. Um, this is very much the type of outfit that most of the employees would be wearing. So I think that you would still, I would still want to dress one click up from this, but I think that um, uh, B is 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 where uh, where I would go. Waitress at Applebee's, that is a little casual when what you're going to be doing is serving people an administrative assistant at a doctor's office. I think that um, a doctor's office is going to be, applying to a doctor's office is going to be very similar to applying to an attorney's office. They are going to want something that is a cut above because people are coming there and they're going to want somebody who looks like sanitary and clean and professional. So let's um, let's try um, uh, SPCA and see how we do. Is that our final answer? And yeah. Luckily, I put it together so I know the answer. Um, what job interview would this outfit not be um, the best choice to wear? An attorney's office if you were going to be a runner, and that means like you're delivering uh, uh, briefs or other paperwork um, around town, youth leader at a summer camp, um, construction job, or a bank teller. Which would this be not be the best choice? I'm seeing C's, a construction job. Yes, and that's our final answer. One three hundred. Um, so uh, let's look at another. At which job interview might this outfit be minimally acceptable? Um, a veterinarian assistant, a teacher's aide at a child care center, a shampoo technician at a beauty salon, or as a housekeeper at Motel 6. There might be widely divergent answers on this question. What do you have? I'm seeing D, a housekeeper at Motel 6. Yay, yay. Um, yeah, the veterinarian assistant, again, it's a medical office, even though it's your pet, people treat their pets as though they're like family members. Teacher's aid just doesn't have, just doesn't have the right look for parents. And if I'm going to a beauty salon and even if somebody's shampooing me, I want them to look like they work at a beauty salon. So housekeeper at a hotel, 
I think that is um, so you would have 500. Uh, next, um, what interview would this outfit be acceptable for? A, a dog groomer at PetSmart. B, a sales clerk at Barnes & Noble. C, all of the jobs listed above. Or D, a forklift operator at a warehouse. So where would this outfit be acceptable? We're going to go with C, all of the above. All of the above, and let's see, is that the final answer? There is one more. So we will go for 2,000. These four applicants show up for an interview to be a night auditor uh, trainee at a large hotel chain. Which outfit will make the best impression? Is it A, is it B, is it C, or is it D? We are going to say B. And let's see how you do. Final answer. So, um, so the, the point is on this, as I shift to, um, to back to my other screen, the point is that the way in which you dress will have a lot to do with like, you know, what the employer, how the employer is going to feel about you and whether or not you, you basically, you, you have an understanding of the job. People do get knocked out of positions because of the way in which they work or the way in which they dress. I think the, the point that I just wanted to make with that activity is that it is not always like a white blouse and black slacks um, uh, for an interview. There is, it is divergent, but what you wanna do is think about what do the people who work in that line of work, what what do they wear? And that's going to help you to make that choice. Okay. So the next thing that I want us to look at is interviewing itself and interviewing comes in many forms. Um, uh, one of the things that I see about interviews right now because of COVID is that before they oftentimes they were in person, you went into a, a, a company, but now a lot of employers are moving or have moved to doing a video interview, just like this um, on Zoom or some other platform. Sometimes you end up having an interview that's a panel. So there are more than one uh, people either in the office or on the call. Uh, sometimes it's in person, but sometimes it's actually just by telephone. Um, they'll do uh, telephone interviews. So the, the thing that I just want to point out here is when you are doing a video um, a panel and in-person interview, all of the things that we're going to talk about um, from here forward are important, but also you still want to pay attention to how you're dressed, how you look, what's in the background um, and also background noise because all of those things will have influence on what the person thinks. So our techniques will apply to everything. Um, so one of the most important tools that you'll need to prepare for a job interview, it's what we talked about yesterday as well, and that is an actual job description. So if you applied and you got the interview, that means that your resume and your cover letter worked. And now it's time to prepare for that next step, that like moment of truth. Employers in their ads pretty much tell you what they're looking for. Just like we looked at yesterday in the uh, resume and cover letter um, uh, session, uh, same thing holds true in the interview session. By carefully reading the ad, you can pretty closely predict what the employer is going to ask you about, and more importantly, what kind of things that you need to say. So I want to show you several examples of a person applying for this job. Um, and what I want you to keep in mind as we do that is what this employer is looking for. So um, uh, very quickly, the employer is looking for somebody 
who um, meets deadlines, somebody who has a strong customer focus, um, um, is going to be a positive addition to working as a team member, wants somebody who's efficient and has good time management, is professional, and just has a positive can-do attitude. So those are some of the things that we want to make sure that we emphasize. So let's meet Cole and um, we're going to hear his interview. Question one, tell me about yourself. Oh God, um, there's really not much to say about myself. Um, I guess I'm a middle child, so that's always been uh, something I've had to deal with growing up. Um, I'm uh, from Wisconsin. Uh, if you didn't know, that's uh, the cheese capital of the United States. And I guess a little fun fact about me is I hate cheese. So let's go back. I'm sorry that that skip forward. I need to go back. I, I'll stop it so that you don't have to hear it again. But when we look at this, um, let's think, what did the landscape, what did the ad say? The ad said that they wanted somebody with landscaping experience, although it wasn't really required, but if you had experience, that's going to be helpful, can operate equipment safely and demonstrates professionalism. So um, in this interview, like think to yourself, how did Cole do? If you were interviewing Cole at the end of that answer, would you say, wow, like, you know, he's going to bring a lot to the organization. So, um, you know, I look at it and I think, yeah, he didn't meet the mark because did the employer say, I'm really looking for someone who maybe grew up in Wisconsin or did the employer say, I'm really interested in hiring somebody who is a middle child because I relate to that or, you know, I personally don't like cheese and what I want to do is I want to hire somebody who also doesn't like cheese. No. And yet that is what Cole spent the few minutes of, 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 of this interview talking about, which is not going to move his position forward. And I just look at it and I think, um, did he really come off as motivated? And I personally did not hear that. So I didn't hear motivation. So let's look at Cole. What happened with Cole is that then we work together to construct some better, a better answer. And um, let me show you how that went. Well, my name is Cole Belcher. And for the past few years, I've been a student at Eureka College. Growing up, I worked on a family farm where I had the opportunity to work with a wide variety of different equipment and even help my family with irrigation designs. While I'm not in class, I spend most of my free time working at the local park district's golf course, where I'm a part of the groundskeeping department. I also have been able to head up some of the landscaping projects. In fact, if you drive by Parkview Golf Course now, you'll see the new sign display with greenery surrounding it, and that's my most recent project. Is this is this the type of information that you're looking for oh, is, is, is what he said. But I want you to think about that answer and notice in that answer, like in, in um, there, there were very specific things that I think that Cole did better in this particular answer. Um, one, remember they said in the ad that landscaping experience was helpful, but it wasn't required. So what did Cole do? He talked about, having worked on his family farm. Uh, now, that was probably not a paid thing. He was probably forced to do it by his dad. Actually, I know that to be the case. Um, and But now he works at a park and he is doing some landscaping. Can he operate equipment safely? Um, he mentions that in, and I think now notice he's dressing differently. He's combed his hair back. Um, so that he, he didn't cut it, but he looked a lot more professional. I think that when an employer says, tell me about yourself, you want to tell them something about yourself that has to do with this particular job. So now here's another question that almost universally employers ask. And so let's see how Cole does on this one. 
Question six. What are your weaknesses? Oh, um, I'd have to say that my weaknesses would probably be, uh, I hate getting up in the morning sometimes. Uh, thank God for coffee. Oh my God. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll take like a five hour energy that's helped me get through quite a few midterms, uh, finals and, and some long work days. But, uh, Question six. Oh. What are your weaknesses? I'm going to scroll ahead. Quite a few midterms, uh, finals, and, and some long work days. But uh, you just got to do what you can to stay awake sometimes. And I do that so I can come in and I can work effectively. Um, I mean, there was even this one time where uh, back in school, I was having a hard time with some of my classes. I was having to stay up super late. So I went on Amazon and I bought these uh, energy pills and that was just a rough week, but uh, it really helped out. So, I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll do what I can to stay awake so I can come in and work uh, just to be the best worker that I can be and yeah, whatever costs. So I want you to contrast his answer with what the employer is looking for. The employer said that he's looking for somebody who's punctual and hardworking. And what Cole is saying is, I can't get up in the morning. Like, oh, you know, it's so hard. And that in order to get up and get going, he has to have coffee, he has to have energy drinks, he's bought pills that are some kind of energy pills. That is not the kind of thing that the employer wants to hear. So, you know, when I look at what's he need to work on for his uh, upcoming interview, he needs a much better answer. And the um, um, uh, he needs to talk about weaknesses. Uh, I'm going to show you here. And let me show you the next slide. Um, what is your biggest weakness? This question is oftentimes asked, so it's it's pretty standard. And I recently did some mock interviews with some first-time job seekers. Um, well, it was about a year ago because it was before COVID. But and I do this every year. Um, it's volunteer work that I do. Um, but but COVID didn't let us do it in 2020. So anyway, I always ask this particular question. What is your biggest weakness? And here are some of the answers that, that I get from some first-time job seekers. I'm lazy. Um, I've heard I'm not very motivated. And I've heard I procrastinate a lot. Um, I don't like working with people. I just like being left alone. And last, like, I don't have any weaknesses. Um, so all of those answers need work. Um, they're, they're actually, I mean, they're in a sense, they're far too honest, but I'm not suggesting to you or to anybody that you lie, but certainly there's another way of looking at this. So, because what employer is looking for an unmotivated, lazy person who hates people and likes to procrastinate? Uh, pretty sure those are not requirements of any job. So what I saw that the interviewees did not seem to understand was the employer's perspective. They weren't sitting in the employer's seat hearing what their answers would sound like to an employer. So, um, and, and then another mistake is just um, uh, focusing on a weakness that turns out is actually a requirement of the job. So as an example, a weakness what should never be something that's a requirement on the job. So that if you're applying for a customer service job, you don't wanna say that your weakness is that you're shy or that sometimes you can't control your temper or maybe it's not really liking people, it's liking to be alone. If you're applying for a job that's in the medical profession, then you definitely do not want to say that your weakness is punctuality, lack of patience, um, you know, uh, liking to work fast and, you know, cut corners and not be um, um, uh, detail oriented. So the weakness that you want to give should always be something that is not job related. Let's see how Cole does it this time. I would say that my biggest weakness is that I can be stubborn. 
Now, I don't mean that I'm hard-headed and unwilling to work with others, but instead that I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to the things that I do. There's been a couple of times at my current job where I've had to be told to go home by my supervisors because I just kept staying late trying to complete some of the work that I hadn't been able to complete throughout the day. I believe that if you're going to work on something, you need to put your best effort into it. Otherwise, you shouldn't do it at all. So notice this time, I think Cole put together a much better answer. Um, and he starts off with like, I'm a little hard headed, but his hard headedness is because he wants to do such a good job that sometimes, and he wants to finish projects that sometimes he has to be told to go home. That's a good weakness. And that's a weakness that really isn't a weakness. It's more like a strength, um, but he gets away with it. So another common, so these are three common questions that are you're oftentimes asked. Let's look at um, employers are gonna ask, or oftentimes are gonna ask, why are you interested in working here? Why are you interested in this position? Why are you interested in this field? So um, let's see how Cole does on this. Question two, why are you interested in this position? Um, so to be honest, um, I uh, started looking around for jobs. Like I said, I'll be graduating soon here. And uh, I saw um, your job being advertised on uh, one of the job sites I look at. And it was the first one that I saw it looked interesting to me. Uh, and it uh, just seems like it'd be a really. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, hang on. I need to go back to that. Uh, something's wrong. Okay. Here it is. I'll bring it forward. Interesting to me. Uh, and it uh, just seems like it'd be a really uh, fun experience. Um, so I figured, hey, might as well apply. So did that sound like he, he has a positive can-do attitude, that he's hardworking, he's motivated, and he's willing to learn? It sounds like he's just looking for ads and saw this and thought, oh, you know, uh, let's give it a try. So that's not a very well formulated answer. So with work and sitting down and thinking about what's the ad say? And so what do I want to make sure I get across? Let's see how he did on his second run. This beachfront Verbo is about to become part of an unforgettable well, vacation memory. The, the moment when so much well anticipation and maybe just a little craziness finally gets the room to run. But this moment didn't begin with a mad dash. It began with a tap. When the family booked their summer vacation early on Verbo, your together awaits. Book early, cancel if you need to. It almost sounds like you have another um, YouTube window open and it's playing an ad. Yeah, except that I don't. I'm going to try it. I'll try it again. If it's something better work. for myself. I was starting to get comments from well-meaning people that would say to me, I don't understand how you can work out so much and still be well, so big. Then I tried Noom and pretty yeah. quickly I lost 10 gonna, pounds, let me, which um, stop to me was huge. Second. I had my scale move in so long. I really apologize. Um, okay. Your screen. I work out every day for a year. That's it's very awesome. weird. I can't I make this stop. I already lost 14 pounds. I lost 14 pounds right away. I've lost 10 pounds, nine pounds lighter and uh, a lot happier. Sorry, I'm really sorry. That is those kind of technical glitches that I hate. Um, sorry, it's some, Okay, now screen share. And we are back to here. And then we were. Oh. Um, it's not letting me share now. Or I can, I, see your, I can see your screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Then let I'm 
sorry, then let me oh, see where we're at. Um, okay, I just want to find where Cole was, and he was right here. Uh, yep, yeah, this is the one we were on. Okay. Technology is great, but sometimes it can cause <sighs> unforeseen issues. Okay, oh, we saw that one. So this is the one that I was looking for. Okay. Well, working part-time on the groundskeeping group has been very rewarding. Being part of that team and seeing projects finished and learning about different landscaping designs has been a great experience. During my time working there, I had found a passion for landscaping work, and that passion is what inspired me to seek a career in professional landscaping. And after doing some research to find the companies that have been around a while, I was happy to come across your company and see that it had listed an opening. I believe that if I want to make the most out of my education and experience, your company offers the best opportunity. So when you compare and you contrast what his first answer was, which is, yeah, I was just looking at some ads and I saw this and I thought, oh, okay, you know, let me give it a try versus, you know, I think that this company can, um, um, you know, I have something to contribute and, you know, I think that this is a really good company for me to, um, to learn a lot and to grow. This, um, I think, response shows more of a can-do attitude, demonstrates hardworking, motivated, and a, a willingness to learn. So what I just did was I showed you three, um, in, or, you know, uh, three before and after. Those are all very common interview questions. Just like one little side point that I want to make, an important point, um, but is that to, um, uh, to basically to build interview answers and to be able to show that you're a good fit for the job, it's really important, again, you have to have the job description. And that's why I showed it on each one of those interviews so that you could we can remember that, that the employer is a looking for a certain thing, a certain set of characteristics, certain skill set, and what we want to be able to do is demonstrate that we have those skill sets, we have those qualifications, we have those soft skills, the attitude, the can do, et cetera. Um, the way in which um, um, that I think that what Cole did so successfully in his second interview is that it was clear then he had read the ad, um, he had studied it, um, and he pointed out in his answers how he had the skills and qualifications or and how he would fit in and be a productive member of that team and or um, that he was dependable and that if he got the job, he was somebody who was likely to, to stay. So I want us to dig in a little bit more deeply because I think that this is a tip that will help it helps immensely in terms of preparing for job interviews. And I'll show you here in, in a second. Um, so to prepare, first step is, um, or, or first thing is, just like we looked at yesterday, how to customize a resume, how to customize a cover letter, uh, you can, in a sense, customize your preparation for an interview and do much better um, if you just read you know, it's basically, you know, uh, uh, behind the lines of, of the want ad. So employers will tell you exactly what they're looking for, and they expect you to be prepared to talk about, like, why you would be a good fit. If an employer is listing in an ad, must be punctual, must be on time, must be um, uh, dependable, what that tells me is they've struggled with that in the past with some choices that they've made in terms of who they hired. So I wanna go in and I wanna make sure if they say they're looking for dependable, punctual, uh, people who show up on time, I'm definitely gonna build that into my answer. But what I want you to see is that to prepare, then just read and reread the ad um, because you can predict the questions that will be asked. Um, so you're going to read the ad, and when you're reading it, you're asking yourself, what is this employer most concerned with? Like, what do they keep talking about over and over in the ad? 
what kind of person do they seem to be looking for? Like, can you describe the person? Um, and like, it, you know, they'll say things like detail oriented, very organized, um, um, uh, you know, somebody who has excellent communication skills. Um, and I can put together a visual picture of who it is that, what kind of person that they're looking for. Um, but what question, the, the thing that that helps you to do is figure out what is what questions is the employer likely to ask in the interview? What does the employee or interviewee need to emphasize in order to be a good fit? Because I think more prepared people are, the more relaxed they are. And the more relaxed they are, the better chances they are to do like just, you know, hit one out of the park on the interview. Let me show you how, I'll, I'll give you an example of how you can predict questions. Um, so let's go to, next is, so to predict the questions, like let's say that there's an ad and this is for construction and the employer in the ad says, um, must be a team player, must work well with others. Um, if you're thinking about, well, I wonder, like, the, the, you know, what might they ask? Um, I'll go ahead and just in the interest of time, I'll show you what I think that they're gonna ask. Um, um, and this is how you can predict. I think they're gonna ask something like, if they say in the ad, team player works well with others. Their question is likely to be, so do you prefer to work a, uh, work as a team or work alone and why? And what do they want to hear? They want to hear that you want to work as a team. Um, they don't want the alone answer. But, um, you know, that's, they're giving you this choice. If you've studied the ad, I know exactly what direction that I need to go. Or alternatively, they might ask a question like, tell me about a time that you worked as a member of a team and how that worked out for you. And what they want to hear is that you like being a member of a team and that you work well with other people. You can bring up in that in, you know, that, you know, any example of a time that you've worked as a team, which the team can be just, just. Like me, I have, um, uh, there's five of us in my family. So there were five siblings, I'm second oldest, but sometimes we had to go out and we had to like clean up the yard. We would do it as a team, we'd divide up tasks based on age. So it doesn't even have to be a paid thing if you played sports. Um, you can talk about that. I was a Girl Scout, so I could talk about that. Um, there are lots of ways to be able to bring it up, but if they want somebody who's a team to prepare, you need to think, how have you worked as a team? So one of the things that I'll ask you to do, and I have, I can see that we have a few people on and I, and um, somebody will have to read me what gets said. Um, I'm not seeing chat, but using chat, can you think of any one question that you have been asked at more than one job interview? Or if you've only ever been on one job interview, what's a question that you've been asked at any job interview? So what is a question that you've been asked at multiple job interviews? So we'll give it a few seconds here. Feel free to go ahead and type your response in the chat. So one that has Maybe. come up is, where do you see yourself in five years? Yes, where do you see yourself five years from now? It's like at the, it's exactly, that's in the top. And let me give you some others that are oftentimes asked. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Why should I hire you? And sometimes something like, tell me about a conflict that you have had and tell me how you've handled it. The, the thing that I see is my experience is that, you know what, employers are not very creative in terms of when they're asking interview questions, that if you go to multiple interviews, it is very likely that you're gonna be asked the same question by several employers 
So, and what I find is there, if you go online, you Google, you go, what are the uh, most frequently asked interview questions? And on some websites, there'll be 50, on some, it'll be a hundred. It's all, but, but it's a lot. Um, um, uh, and my experience is that it's very difficult, unless maybe you're like a, a actor or actress, like who has, who can memorize scripts, it's very difficult to memorize or to think about an answer to every one of those frequently asked questions that you might be asked. So it's helpful to be able to figure out what is the employer really asking? Um, because that way you're going to have an answer or get a good idea of what your answer should be. So the real challenge is to shrink those that hundred frequently asked questions or 50 frequently asked questions um, into something that is more manageable and less scary. So what um, I'm going to uh, give us a bit of practice here because I want you to see what it is that I'm saying. And that is um, that if we can take all of those questions, these hundred uh, most frequently asked questions, and we can reduce it to three, there's only really three questions employers are asking. I don't care how they frame it. I don't care what the words are, how they ask it. There's really only three questions. Um, one of them is, uh, one question that they're oftentimes asking is, um, are we going to like working with you? Are you going to fit in here with other, you know, uh, uh, members of our team? And so like an example of the way in which they might frame that, they might ask the question is, give me a time that you've had a conflict and how you handled it. Because what they're really listening for is, are you going to fit in here? Are we going to like working with you? Or are you going to be like difficult to get along with? Um, they may ask something like, um, if I ask a teacher of yours what um, it was like to work with you as when you were their student, um, you know, what do you think your teacher would say? You know what they're listening for? Are we going to like working with you? Are you going to fit in here? So there are lots of different ways to frame the question. But that is one of the things that employers are asking. The second one is, do you have the skills and qualifications to do the job? Like, I don't want to hire somebody who isn't going to be able to perform. And so they will ask questions about your skills and qualifications. And so maybe what they'll say, um, uh, one example might be like, uh, tell me what skills you bring to, to this job. Or can you tell me about... Um, things, um, uh, projects that you've worked on or um, uh, jobs that you've done that you think uh, prepare you to do the work that I've described. Um, so because frequently they'll start off and they'll tell you about the job. Um, or based on what I've told you about the job, tell me um, uh, where you think that you would do really well and what things that uh, you might have a, a big learning curve on. So what they're trying to figure out is, do you have the, enough skills to be able to do this? And the last thing that they're asking is, are you going to stay if we hire you? Or are you going to quit thereafter very quickly? Because employers spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and, um, uh, you know, within time and energy, it's money to be able to bring people in and interview. And that is not employers most, like, happy uh, part of their job. It's not the thing they look forward to. It's just something that you have to do. And so they don't want to hire somebody, get them up, get them trained. And then a week later or two weeks later or a month later, they're quitting and they got to start this whole process all over again. So they're going to ask you questions to be able to figure out if you're going to stay. And sometimes the question's pretty direct and they'll say, um, how long do you expect to remain with this company? That's just hitting it dead on. But there are lots and lots of ways of asking that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, what is the question behind the question? And um, so um, in using chat and, uh, and you guys can tell me what's on chat. What is the question behind this question? 
what are your weaknesses? What are your weaknesses? Is that a, are we going to like working with you? Um, will you fit in? Is that a, do you have the skills and qualifications for this job? Or is that, are you going to stay if we hire you? Which of those um, three categories do you think is the real question behind that question uh, using chat? Any answers? Anybody taking a guess? So I'm going to go with the second one. Do you have the skills and qualifications to do the job? Okay. All right. And somebody else, and I'm going to bring this all back around at the end of this, but somebody else could say, you know, what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out if we're going to like working with you. Like, will you fit in here? Like, so if you say my weakness is that I can't get up in the morning, I'm not going to like working with you because you're already going to, you're always going to be late, but you're right. You could say, well, my weakness is that I haven't had a lot of experience, you know, um, on uh, working on like the kitchen equipment and I would need to learn that. Like that's a possibility. So it could be either one of those. Let's do another. What's the question behind the question? Why did you leave your last job? And is it, are we going to like working with you? Do you have the skills and qualifications? Are you going to stay if we hire you? Most likely is the question behind the question. If you're putting it in categories is, if are you going to stay if we hire you? The reason they're asking, why did you leave your last job? Because if you say something like, well, I just, the supervisor was really unfair or um, I wasn't making enough money. So I left and then I didn't even have a job. Um, or I left my last job because of a conflict with a coworker. What it all sounds like is if I hire you, you're just going to leave here too which also you could argue could be, are we gonna like working with you? Um, but I think it's more of a direct line to, why did you leave your last job is, are you gonna stay or are you gonna be somebody who's gonna work here for a short time and then you're gonna leave? If somebody says, please walk me through um, your uh, resume and your work experience, what are they really asking? Do you have the skills and qualifications to, to do the job? And so um, uh, one other or another one, uh, two more is, what's the question behind the question? Uh, how would you describe yourself? And what I want you to notice is, how would you describe yourself is likely to be, are we going to like working with you? Um, are you going to fit in here? Uh, because of the kind of things that you would say about yourself, um, like, now, uh, if I was telling you how I would describe myself is that how I would actually describe myself is I'm really a generous person and I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really empathetic. Um, you know, I feel what other people feel. I can walk a mile in other people's shoes and I think like have a connection. Um, that's going to tell you whether or not you're going to like working with me, or I could say, um, how would you describe yourself? Uh, I would describe myself as somebody who spent 40 years working in workforce, teaching people how to get, keep, um, uh, and advance on jobs. And so, you know, in that I've, you know, done training seminars and blah, blah, blah. So I'm describing the skills and qualifications, but I, so it's one of those, it is one of those two. Um, next, where do you see yourself five years from now? Um, uh, which was one of the most frequently asked questions just seconds ago. And I would um, argue that that's a, are you going to stay if we hire you? Like, where do you see yourself five years from now? If you say, well, five years from now, I think I'm going to be in California. I'm going to be living on the beach. I'm going to be, you know, and you're describing that. What an employer wants to hear is I am going to, hopefully I'm still here learning all aspects of this business, you know, making this a, uh, uh, you know, making this a career path. Um, um, or, well, where I see myself five years from now, five years from now, I will have gone to college and I would be graduating or have graduated. And I guess my goal is that I would like to learn this so that when I'm home on um, uh, school breaks, when I am uh, home for the summer, 
that I would be able to still work here and be a productive m member of your team. So that is most likely though, is are you gonna stay here? What I want you to just see is that if you had a hard time figuring out one of the categories, I want you to see it didn't matter because there is actually no right or wrong answer. The thing is that that's the beauty of this is that as long as you formulate an answer that uh, talks about whether or not you have the skills and qualifications, whether or not you'll stay, or whether or not you're going to be a good fit for the organization and you're going to, um, people are going to like working with you. As long as your answer is in one of those three categories, then you're hitting the ball out of the park. Um, um, so, it's, um, I find that the vast majority of questions, if you went through the hundred I have, the hundred most frequently asked questions, the vast majority of them are, will you fit in questions? Are you going to fit in? Are we going to like working with you? They want to know about your personality. Um, and that's both in um, like in uh, school, uh, going to school interviews as well as um, in real interviews, because they're asking you about your work habits, your work attitudes, your ability to get along with others. They evaluated your skills and your qualifications, looking at your cover letter, your resume, your application. And, you know, maybe they even did a pre-screening. So they kind of have that covered otherwise they probably wouldn't have brought you in for an interview what they're really concerned about is are we hiring the right person somebody who's going to be a good fit who's not going to upset the apple cart so you know the thing i want you to think about is how does understanding that there are only three questions not a hundred questions how does that help you prepare for an interview actually quite easily because when i work with people both my niece who was looking for her very first job, another niece who was applying for a management job in Columbia Sportswear, she wanted to be like a, a assistant store manager. I have worked with like uh, people, my own husband who was going for an architecture job. Um, what we do is, and all job seekers, they sometimes have three pieces of paper. It depends on how long they've been in the workforce. Sometimes it's only one piece of paper, but it's three columns. Um, and you have to give me examples of times, like how you're gonna, what you want to emphasize that shows that you get along with people, that you'll be a good fit in the organization, you know, whether or not like it's like I volunteer work at my church or volunteer my time at my church. Um, uh, I was a Girl Scout. I was actually a Girl Scout leader. Um, I'm empathetic, like all of those things. I'm bulleting the list. What are all my skills and qualifications for this particular job that I'm applying for? I'm going to list um, all those in a bulleted list and then demonstrate that I'm actually a good risk. I'm very likely to stay. I'm very likely to remain um, on, on that job. Then if I have this bulleted list, no matter what question that I'm asked, I'm just trying to uh, uh, make sure that I make, build into the answer, I guess, the points that I put on this worksheet. So um, if you study this list and um, then no matter what the question, you can build your answers around these categories. So bottom line, you want to get your ducks in row, uh, in a row for interviewing. And so, again, I go back to what I circled or, you know, where I started. You need a job order. Um, you can practice job interviewing without a job order. But then, again, a job description, you're not customizing. Um, uh, and you're coming up with generic answers. And employers want to hear how you're going to help me. Um, so everything starts with reading and analyzing that job order so that you know what the employer is looking for. Next, uh, dress appropriately, or that alone could cost you the opportunity. If I'm looking for somebody to work in a law office and you come in in like tennis shoes and a, uh, you know, running pants, uh, probably not going to get the job. Um, um, uh, again, what I just said, you want to prepare a bulleted list of topics that you want to discuss at the interview. And those topics are what skills do you bring that they're looking for? 
And even if you don't have the skill, it has to be a willingness to learn it. Um, uh, oftentimes we do have transferable skills and I can talk about that, but it's also, it's like, I don't know a lot about that, but I'm a really quick study or I am really motivated uh, to learn that as quickly as I can. Um, you want in that list that, um, you know, all the proof, all the evidence that you're a good team player and that you're easy to be around, you're easy to work with, um, and that you won't take the job and then you won't get trained and then just quit. Show me um, uh, some evidence that you plan to stay and you plan to contribute. So one of the things that I do, believe it or not, I make the people that I'm working with um, do note cards and they write the frequently asked quite well, we predict what they're gonna be asked. Um, because I can read the job description and figure out like what are the major things em this employer is concerned with. And we're going to write that, uh, write those questions on one side of the note card, intermix frequently asked questions. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Tell me where you're going to be five years from now. And they have to write out their answer. They're writing out the answer based on these three things. And then um, um, they're kind of practicing them like a actor or actress who's like learning their um, you know parts for a, for a play um, because one of the things I find is practice 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 really helps what you don't want is to show up in an interview and be asked a question that's like out of left field that I never even thought of before um, because I think that that makes it very difficult and when you have the note cards it's easy uh, much easier uh, to practice and ask yourself in a mirror the question and then answer it back um, because that's going to make you more relaxed. So um, we only have a minute or so left. Um, so I can see if there were any questions in the Q&A. Otherwise, here is my contact information. And, you know, if something comes up that you want to ask, um, uh, shoot me an email. So anything in there, um, Brittany or Kirsten? No questions, um, but Jody, I do want to thank you so much for taking your time to share this great information. I did put the link to the Palooza page that has all of our on-demand resources, as well as the live sessions that are scheduled for the rest of this week, um, and the recordings for any of the live sessions that you may have missed will be up there as well, and that web page will be up for quite some time for you to go back and check out all of those resources and watch those videos. So Jody, again, thank you so much. Um, and I hope that we will see some of you virtually on our next live session tomorrow at 11 a.m. as well. So thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks.